Today in the Test Kitchen, we're going to make a traditional recipe using the Dutch oven. This is one of our most popular recipes on Pinterest. It's the classic Swiss steak. So contrary to what it sounds like, Swiss steak isn't a traditionally cooked steak. If you're not familiar, it's a piece of cube steak that's seared and then braised. What makes it really nice is it's got just a little bit of tomato product and some Worcestershire sauce to give it a little pop of umami and then some really basic ingredients like onions, garlic, and beef stock. So for more recipes and techniques, check out some more of our videos and remember to subscribe. Before I go into the pan with the cube steaks, I'm gonna season them well. The thing about cube steak is, you see them a lot at the grocery store and maybe a lot of people don't know what to do with them. Really what the grocery store does for you is they tenderize them. This isn't a cut that's normally extremely tender, but they use a machine run it through, it tenderizes the meat mechanically, and then it makes for a great eating experience. And then it's a very economical way to get a good meal. So that's your cube steak right there. You can see where it's been tenderized with the machine. So by running it through a tenderizer, your butcher is helping to break up the muscle fibers and make this a little more tender. Think of it like cutting a steak against the grain. The reason I'm using a Dutch oven is because I want to sear and slow cook all in the same vessel. So I'm adding a little bit of a olive oil blend into my pan, and then I'm gonna sear these steaks in batches. The reason I want to sear in batches is because I want to get a nice brown on them. So if I tried to add these all at once, it would cool down the bottom of the pan too much and you wouldn't get a great sear. By doing them two at a time, I'm really gonna get a nice sear which really helps develop the flavor for this recipe. So I'm gonna sear these around three minutes per side, but time isn't as important as browning. I just wanna make sure I get a nice brown crust because that's really gonna be important to the flavor of the dish. All right, so I'm gonna flip because you can really see I'm getting a nice brown on that steak. And I know some people will think that this kind of looks like hamburger. It's because it does look like hamburger. It's almost there because using that tenderizer, it chops up the meat on the exterior a little bit, but that breaks up the fibers and makes it more tender in the long run. So and also with this, I'm not looking for a target temperature, medium, medium rare, or something like that, because this is a sear and then a braise. So we're looking to cook it through fully and start to break down that tissue just a little bit more, then it'll become very tender and juicy. Get my second batch in. I'll take the second batch of steaks out and we'll go in with the aromatics. This is just onions and garlic, a great base to any braise. I'm gonna saute this in the residual oil that's in the pan. And I'll try and bring up, start to bring up some of the fawn that those steaks have developed. I did turn the heat down to medium so I don't burn the garlic and onions. Now that I've let these cook for a few minutes, I'm gonna add in the tomato paste. The reason I add tomato paste directly to the onions and garlic is because I want it to cook a little bit more. As it cooks in the pan, it'll start to caramelize and develop even more flavor. So this is the great thing about using a Dutch oven. I'm not losing any flavor. Everything I cook in here stays in here. So I've let the tomato paste just brown a little bit with the onions and garlic. Now I'll go in with the rest of the ingredients. Got diced tomatoes beef broth, Worcestershire sauce, and then a couple bay leaves. So now I'll stir this a little bit again, trying to bring up any fond off the bottom of that pan. And I'll kick the heat up just a touch because I want this to come to a simmer while it's on the stove top. If I don't, it'll take way too long to come up to a simmer in the oven. So you want to simmer on the stove top, add the meat back, and then place in the oven. Now that my braising liquid has come to a simmer, I'm gonna return these steaks to the pan. Now they don't need to be completely submerged, just sitting in the liquids what you want. Now, we'll get the lid on this. And I'm gonna go into a preheated oven at 300 degrees for about 90 minutes. You can even take it a little longer, but you just wanna make sure that the sauce doesn't over reduce. It's been 90 minutes and we're out of the oven. So let's see how this looks. As you can see, a lot of the liquid has reduced, which is a good thing, that concentrates that flavor. 
by doing a short braise like this, it really helps to tenderize this meat. So obviously it's gonna be much over well done, but that's okay because it was slow cooking in a lot of liquid and it will retain a lot of moisture. We've got a super easy, very comforting homey dish with minimal ingredients that's cooked easily in the Dutch oven. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.